Hello and welcome everybody to our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about Dynamics 365 marketing and um, kind of give you guys some insights and a little demo of what you can expect out of Dynamics 365 marketing and how it can positively affect your company and your marketing. So uh, let's kick things off. Daniel, do you mind moving to the next slide, please? Perfect. So um, just for today, a little bit about us. My name's Nick. I am the sales manager here at Alpha Bold, and uh, I got 10 years of experience just kind of in the sales realm, um, like account management, um, sales management, and a few other little tangents there. And then we are joined by Daniel Ganey, who is our senior consultant for Dynamics. And he's going to be taking us through the majority of today's webinar as far as the demos are concerned. So um, next slide, please. Oops. Okay, cool. So um, a little bit about who we are as Alpha Bold. Um, so we are a Microsoft partner, a Microsoft Gold partner that is. And um, today specifically, we're gonna be talking about Dynamics 365 marketing. We were actually just awarded partner of the year by Microsoft for Dynamics customer service. So we are very proud and you know, we you are looking at the best here. So we're super happy about it. Um, but we also have a bunch of other practices that we um, take on, such as NetSuite or ERPs. We have an AI IoT practice, um, business intelligence, and then also DevOps and QA. Um, a little bit about what we do as far as our consulting side. We have ad hoc consulting for just quick fixes and projects. We also do development, and then we also do optimizations. So that includes not only um, solution opt optimization, such as Dynamics 365 marketing and other um, technologies, but we also look at processes within organizations to make sure they're optimized there as well. And then a um, little bit about how we do it. We have a methodology here called Old Route, and um, essentially it's working with our clients to give them full visibility into projects, learning their goals, figuring out roadmaps on how to get there, and then, um, orchestrating it by getting it done. And then we lead and then support. Um, we're very proud of our support. So we want to make sure that anything that we deploy and or help our clients with, it is successful in achieving those goals. So we want to maintain those relationships and have a long-term relationship with our clients to grow with you and make sure you guys are successful. Um, that's about us, so next slide. All right, um, some of the industries we have served, it's a lot. <laughs> um, we really do tap into a lot of different industries and we actually like to take some knowledge that we gain from each of those industries and try to apply it to others and really find those best solutions and um, optimize your solutions and your processes. So next slide. All right, so um, that's enough about us. What we're gonna be actually covering today We'll jump into some marketing challenges that we've identified. Um, I'm sure some of you guys will be able to relate to those. And then right after that, we're just gonna jump right into Dynamics and give you guys some demos. Um, so first off, we'll just kind of do an overview and then we will look at how Dynamics can actually leverage an existing Dynamics, or Dynamics marketing can actually leverage a Dynamics database. And then we'll look at segmentation of customer data so that way you can target a little bit better um, and make a stronger relationship with your leads and clients. And then we will actually do build a customer journey and show you how we can guide customers through um, their relationship with your company and choosing products for your company. Um, that's kind of where I stop talking. Uh, however, I do have some polls that I'll come in with. And then also, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to enter them in the questions box. I'm gonna be monitoring those throughout. Um, I may interrupt Daniel from here to there to ask those questions, put them on the spot a little bit. Um, otherwise, if we can't answer them um, during, that, during the webinar, we will um, reach out to you afterwards and answer those for you. Um, the first thing I would like to do is actually start with a poll before I pass it off. So um, for those of you who are here today, um, one thing we'd like to see is if you are actually using Dynamics 365 um, currently. 
So, or at least for your CRM, that is. And um, so we would appreciate your feedback as far as yes, no, you're looking at it, but want to see what else actually um, can come with it or integrate with it to give you that full solution. Um, looks like we got some votes in here and it's split between yes and might be in the future. So that's great. Um, I'm glad to see that no one says no because this webinar I don't think would be as fruitful for those. Um, so great, I'm gonna leave it open for two more seconds to get the rest of the votes in. Perfect. Thank you everybody for your feedback here. And um, that's it for me for right now. I probably will jump in in a little bit, but Daniel, I will hand it over to you. Sounds good. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Nick mentioned, I'm Daniel. Um, I'll be walking you through some marketing today. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the challenges that we've identified when it comes to um, just marketing in general. Um, so really the first challenge is email marketing uh, overall. Um, between things like getting bounced emails and also just um, a lack of connection with other uh, services that you have on your end. Um, so for example, your sales software, your service software, and then also um, if you do field service that as well, um, that lack of connection can cause some issues with um, your ability to really market effectively. Um, another is omni-channel engagement. Uh, there are a lot of new ways to engage with customers, whether that's through social media like Twitter or, or LinkedIn, um, to even just text messaging and, and sort of the standard of email. Um, and Dynamics 365 Marketing includes a pretty broad set of tools that allow you to tailor your interactions to where your customers are, um, rather than uh, just what you want to serve to them. Um, and then also lead management is another issue uh, that we've identified. Um, Dynamics 365 Marketing has a pretty robust uh, lead scoring automation tool. Um, they also have event management and native LinkedIn integration that really gives you a complete solution um, for managing all of your leads from initial contact to purchase. Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to a demo. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off my webcam for this just because it's easier to do that way. While you do that, Daniel, yes. I have another poll because I'm a poll fiend. Um, and just because we just went through those kind of challenges that we've identified, we'd like to hear your feedback. Um, how are you, um, or how satisfied are you with your sales and marketing solutions as far as integrating with each other? Um, very satisfied, like they're perfect. We're getting all the data we need. Um, trying to satisfy, we have to export and then import. Um, neutral, hey, we don't don't care. It's it works right now. Or dissatisfied in one very few minutes or next. Um, it's just not working. All right, getting the votes in, and it looks like we have about a third of you saying very dissatisfied, and um, about a fifth of you saying mostly dissatisfied, and then a third of you saying satisfied. All right, two more seconds here. Perfect, thank you again for your responses. And then I do have one more poll that I'm gonna launch, and it is, what is your biggest marketing pain point? Emails not reaching customers, disparate data systems, um, lack of engagement, omnichannel engagement, lead scoring, event management. Okay. So lead scoring is a big pain point apparently for everybody here. And then we kind of have a tie for a second with um, emails not reaching customers and lack of omnichannel engagement. A little bit of event management in there, perfect. All right, two more seconds here, and then I will stop bugging you guys with polls. Perfect, thank you again for your feedback, and I will stop my jaw wagon. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at this system here. Um, for any of you that are familiar with Dynamics 365, uh, this will look pretty familiar to you as well. Um, Dynamics 365 marketing is built on the same framework as customer service, sales, field service, et cetera. Um, and one of the benefits of this similar framework um, is that all of your accounts, contacts, and activity records are all directly available here from marketing. And it's the exact same data that's shared between your marketing, your sales, your customer service, et cetera. Um, so there's no need to do any integrations between your marketing software and your sales software. Um, there's nothing that really will dilute this data at all. It's all very focused uh, and 
really applies to all of your different aspects of your business. Um, so you can see here that we have our full list of accounts, we have our full list of contacts, um, and then any activities that we have that are corresponding to either these accounts or contacts um, are just visible right here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into some of the actual marketing tools that are available. Uh, and so really the, the bread and butter of marketing is going to be creating these marketing emails. Um, this is really the, the core of any marketing initiative that you would generally have, um, as it's kind of the, the first touch point for a lot of customers. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new marketing email just to kind of show what this process looks like um, from the perspective of Dynamics 365 marketing. Um, so you'll see here that uh, it has loaded a pretty wide set of templates. Um, there are tons and tons of templates that are provided by default from the system. Um, you can also skip this step entirely and do a completely custom template if you'd prefer. Um, but for now, we can go ahead and just choose really any of these templates just to kind of get an idea of um, what these look like and how the editor works. So I'm going to choose this Lacina template. Um, and you'll see that it pops right up with all the different information that's visible in this template. Um, now, if anyone's familiar with the term WYSIWYG, that's what this kind of editor is. Um, it's essentially a drag and drop interface. So you can see on the right side that we have all these different standard elements, and you can basically click one of these and drag it into the form kind of wherever you'd like. So we could just add a text field somewhere if we want, um, and then add any text to it that we'd like. That's actually what this is here. This is just a simple text field um, that's up in this, uh, this top section. Um, and really any of this can be modified. You can even change uh, all the different styles of the buttons. You can change how rounded the corners are even. Um, and then you can also modify the link as well. So you can see that this is pointing to this fabricim.com URL. You can change this to be whatever you'd like, whether that's an internal site or an external site. Um, so it's a very powerful editor, but it's also uh, pretty straightforward to use as well. And uh, we can take a look at one of these email templates in the system that has already been created, just as kind of an example of this. Um, and this is actually an email that we will be using um, a little bit later down the line um, to take a look at customer journeys. Um, but we'll get there in a moment. Um, so here's an example of an email template that's been um, kind of filled out a little bit. Now you can see that there's still some placeholder text like the classic lorem ipsum, um, but obviously there's a lot more going on on this template than the previous one. Um, so you can really do a lot of powerful things with these templates, and you may actually notice as well uh, that this template has a bit of a different form factor to it. It's much thinner, um, which makes this template much better for, for example, a mobile application. Cool. So uh, the next thing that I want to cover uh, with these marketing emails is essentially how do you determine where these emails are going? How do you determine the audience for these emails? And the way that you do that in Dynamics 365 Marketing is by using what are called segments. So if we click into segments here on the sitemap, um, you'll see a few different segments that I've already created as part of uh, kind of our, our testing and, and work in here. Um, what we can do though, is we can create a new segment. And these segments are essentially just um, a list of customers that you interact with. Um, and these are really the primary driver for communication within Dynamics 365 Marketing. Um, they're really, they're, they're used for campaigns in, in a lot of different ways. So let's go ahead and create a new segment, and you'll see that this gives me two different options for segments. Um, these allow you to essentially stratify your data based on the interactions that your customers take. Um, so for example, you can create segments for um, kind of your, your basic things that you'd think of uh, all contacts that live in New York, um, or you can do things that are much more detailed and specific. Um, like you can say all customers that opened a specific email um, or everyone who registered for a particular event that you're hosting. Um, there's a lot of different flexibility there and you can also mix and match these parameters as well. So um, you can have a list of all contacts that live in New York and who opened a specific email um, to really have a, a very clear picture of the exact group of customers that you'd like to, um, to target for your marketing efforts. So for now, we're going to go ahead and create a dynamic segment. Um, and just like with the marketing emails, it gives you the option to choose a template for the segment. So for example, you can see here that, um, as I had mentioned before, we can make a segment that is based on uh, event attendance um, or on certain interactions, like for example, clicking a marketing email. For now, we're just going to do something very basic since we'll be using that in um, creating a customer journey. Um, so we're essentially going to go for this basic profile segment. Um, which allows you to select contacts based on contact attributes, which is essentially just any information that pertains to that contact specifically. So we'll go ahead and select this template. 
Um, and you can see that this uh, interface just pulls up right here. Um, and this is kind of the, the new advanced find look that Dynamics is going for, um, for being able to basically look at data and kind of slice it down to what you need. Um, so you can see here where it says select attribute, I can just click here. And uh, this will show me all of the different attributes or fields that are available um, on the case record. Now, this is all completely configurable. Um, for anyone that's familiar with Dynamics 365, you can add additional fields, you can modify what the fields do, you can set very different types of fields. Um, really, the world is your oyster when it comes to the, the power and flexibility of this system. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and choose address one city. Um, and we're going to say uh, that we want any contacts that are in, let's say, San Diego. Um, and this is it for picking this segment. Um, it's very, very simple to choose uh, records for a simple segment. Um, you can see down here that we can also add a query block or a behavior block. Um, now, a query block is essentially what we see up here. Um, a behavior block is potentially a little bit more interesting because that is specifically relevant to marketing. Um, and you can see here at the very top of this behavior block, we have a, a large list of all the different behaviors that we can expect a customer to take. So anything from um, a confirmation request to an email that got blocked. Uh, so for example, if there's um, some sort of issue with one of your customer journeys where a lot of emails are getting blocked, um, you can actually create a segment based on the customers who have had blocked emails um, and use that to kind of figure out what's going on with those customers, even if you aren't necessarily um, sending records to those customers. Um, you can also do you know, email forwards, hard bounces. Um, there's tons and tons of different options here. Um, but as I mentioned in this case, we're just going to keep it simple. Um, and we're just going to do any contact that has an address in San Diego. Um, so from here, all I have to do is save, although I should probably create a name for my segment. And this is great. I mean, this is way better than <laughs> exporting contacts into Excel, then having to do a filter, then importing them back and cleaning it up. This is so much easier. Yeah, and this is especially nice too when it comes to connecting with your salespeople because there's none of that at all. You don't have to transfer records from one team to another. It's just all in the same interface. It's all in the same database. There's nothing wrong with salespeople. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we've gone ahead and saved our, um, our segment here and we can go ahead and just hit go live on the segment. And this will populate the segment with all the different members that are in this dynamic segment. Um, that was a lot of the word segment. Uh, now, if we click over into members, once this finishes publishing, um, we'll actually be able to see the list of the members that are in this segment. Um, and so this is a dynamic list, as the name might suggest from the segment. Um, and so this will refresh itself anytime there's ever a change that could modify this segment. So if a salesperson adds a new contact that lives in San Diego, it will automatically get added to this segment without any input from users. Um, now, you can create static segments that don't do that if you'd prefer. Um, so let's say, for example, that you have a specific list of contacts that you as a marketing professional or even a sales professional um, know that you want to market to, but there isn't really a common thread between them. For example, maybe they are um, just contacts that you personally feel are, are value, more valuable in that way. Um, you can create a segment specifically for them and basically choose individual names and have that be just a static segment that you can focus on. Um, so there's really a lot of flexibility when it comes to these segments. Cool, so now that we've covered marketing emails and segments, we can now go into customer journeys, which are essentially where you combine marketing emails and segments together to create the ability to kind of follow customers throughout their interactions with you as a company. And Daniel, I did have a yes. question come in. Um, does Dynamics 365 marketing integrate with other applications and or software? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, so Dynamics 365 marketing is built on the same framework, the, the same dataverse backend as customer service, sales, et cetera. Um, so anything that would interact with, uh, with dataverse can also sync with marketing. Um, this includes essentially everything. Um, anything from really Azure resources to SQL databases, even other applications like Twitter and LinkedIn, um, basically, anything that has an API, anything that has a connector in Power Automate, if you're familiar with that tool from Microsoft, um, which are hundreds of apps, um, it's very, very flexible in terms of what it can integrate with. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anytime. Cool. So let's go ahead and create a customer journey. Just uh, find myself here. 
Um, just like with the marketing emails and the segments, you are able to choose templates for the customer journeys. Um, and just like those as well, you can skip this entirely and say, you know what, I just want to create my own custom journey with my own steps, my own processes. Um, you can do that as well. But in this case, we're keeping it simple just for the purposes of a demo. Um, obviously, if there's something more complicated that you'd like to do, I can briefly show you some of the, the ways that you can do that. Uh, but in this case, we're going to just set up a simple email journey. And what this will do is just set a quick email blast of essentially we'll grab an audience and then we'll send this email to that audience and kind of monitor the progress of that email. Okay, so I just go ahead and hit select on that template. And you can see here that uh, in this first tile, it's essentially asking who do we want to be on this journey? And all I have to do here is just choose the segment that I created. And so here are all of my active segments in the system. Um, now this uh, as well can be modified. There are different views that you can have. So different users can have access to different segments. Um, you can even have personal segments that are uh, not visible to others as well, if you'd like. Um, but we're going to go ahead and choose the new segment that we created of all contacts in San Diego. Um, and we're essentially finished with that step. You can even see here that uh, we have this contact count of 29, which perfectly co uh, corresponds to how many contacts are in that segment. We can then go to this choose an email step as well. And uh, we can just choose the marketing email that we'd like to send. Um, now, currently, I only have two emails that are active. Um, but we're going to go ahead and choose newsletter one as our email that we'd like to send to these customers. Um, so we're essentially just sending them kind of a, a recurring automated newsletter. Um, now in the settings for this email, you can modify certain things. Um, for example, we have this schedule here and you can specifically say, I only want this email to go uh, out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, and only from a certain time period. So you could say, for example, that you only want this to go out from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., really whatever you'd like to do. Um, now, this factors in a time zone that I will show you in a moment. Um, if we go over to this general tab, you can see down here that we can choose um, the start time, the end time, uh, and also the time zone as well. So in this case, we're going to pick Pacific time since that's where we are. Um, and you can see that this will then start on uh, at 821 today and then end about a month later. And this is all, of course, configurable. So, and that's it. That's all that you have to set up to make sure that your journey works. Now we just are going to set this to go live. Um, and then what will happen is that uh, once we arrive at this start point, um, this customer journey will start sending out the emails that are uh, part of this journey. Um, and then recording all the different actions that users are taking based on those emails. Um, and I'll show you an example of this on a different journey that we created before this presentation, um, just so you can kind of see what insights it's pulling and, and how it's uh, surfacing those to you. So let's go ahead and go live with this. Yeah, these are complicated records, so it can take a moment. Um, so we're now live with this customer journey. And uh, if we were to refresh the page, we could then see that the interface has changed slightly um, so that we can now start seeing kind of the progress of this journey. Now, um, basically over here. Uh, now, this journey is set to start in a couple hours, so it's really not going to be doing anything special. Um, but again, I mentioned that I have another journey that I can show you that has um, been running for about an hour with a, a few different responses to it. Um, so these are just some of the basic analytics that you'd see. Um, let's go ahead and switch to the other journey so that I can show you what I'm referring to. Um, so this here is a journey that we sent to three people just uh, as our kind of test email accounts, um, our test recipients. Um, so you can see that there's three contacts in the journey and it sent this email to three people. Now, if we click on this, we can see some uh, information about the delivery funnel. We can see that there were three emails total, three were delivered, three were opened and three were clicked. Um, so all of the recipients for this customer journey uh, opened the email and clicked on something. Um, so there's lots of different KPIs that are available here, um, even something like an email sent time, but we can see this in much more detail if we actually click into this email record. Um, so we're now back on the uh, the marketing email page. And if we just click over into insights, you'll see that there's a pretty substantial amount of data uh, available for this email. Now we can even specify a certain customer journey. And so we'll specify this newsletter one journey. Um, and so this is all of the data that corresponds with specifically this journey that we sent out to customers. Um, so you can see just like before that uh, there's three unique opens. There's four opens overall. So someone actually opened it twice. We can see the number of clicks. We can even see how many bounced or have unopens or forwards or um, even how many unsubscribes there are so that you can know 
um, if there's a particular email that's uh, really annoying your customers, you'll know what to do with that. Um, you can even see uh, which links are clicked the most. So this uh, read more link here is the most clicked by far. Um, and we even have down here the location from which these are clicked. So most of these clicks happen from the United States, but three of them somehow happen from Germany. Um, I guess we have a, a German user in this set. <laughs> Um, so now we can see uh, more detail about the delivery progress as well. Um, you can see here just the, the history of the deliveries that happen. In this case, the journey was set up today, and so all the deliveries are today. Um, but you can see all the sends, delivers, blocks, um, really everything that you'd like to see. You can even see the domains broken down. Um, so we can see that there's two from Gmail and one from my own personal domain. Uh, this is, I think, my favorite feature just because it's cool. <laughs> Um, if you click on links, you can actually see a, like a heat map of the different clicks that users are taking. Um, so you can see here that this button was clicked the most, um, or actually this button was clicked the most. Uh, this button was clicked a little bit less, and then this button right here was also clicked. Um, so this data set obviously is pretty small, but if you had a large data set, you could very clearly see um, which links are being clicked the most and which, which CTAs are being ignored. So really a lot of powerful, actionable data coming through. There's even a timeline here as well um, of all the different interactions that can happen for the emails. So all the way over here at the right is basically the start of the journey. And you can actually see over time all the different actions that have happened from all the different users that you've sent this to or different customers. Um, analytics, are <laughs> they, they could really be a webinar all on their own. Um, but there, there's a lot of power here in terms of just being able to see exactly what's happening with any marketing email that you set up. Um, you can see here, for example, that we know when the emails are opened um, as well as when they're reacted to. Um, so over the long term, it can be very clear what times are best to send your emails. Basically, at what times are your customers opening the emails most or reacting to them most so that you can tailor your experiences to your customers. Um, so in addition to all of this customer journey functionality, there are a few other things that I'd like to cover uh, in marketing. Um, the first thing is going to be events. Um, now, this is something that usually you would have to have a third-party piece of software to handle for you. Um, but this is offered by default in Dynamics 365 Marketing. Um, and this is a very powerful tool, but it's also, there, there's a lot to it. And so we're going to be doing kind of an overview of this and not going too in-depth. Um, but we can obviously have you know, meetings on that if you'd prefer or potentially another webinar if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, so we have this little event management section here for events and event registrations, which are essentially just the most important part of events. Um, but if we click down here where it says marketing, we can actually switch the page uh, over to events specifically. Um, and you can see that there's much more information now about events. Um, so we not only have events and event registrations, but we also know who the team members are that are responsible for that event, uh, speakers that are in attendance, uh, check-ins for registration. We can even see the buildings and rooms if you have some sort of large conference that you're hosting. Um, you can even do lay uh, the layout of the logistics. Um, so the hotel, you can do room reservations, um, even sponsorships are available as well. Um, so let's take a look at a, a fairly complicated event here or a, a pretty in-depth event um, and just kind of see how this is structured. Um, to give you a sense of, of how you could use this for yourself. Um, so this here is a conference, as you can see from the name of the, the conference. <laughs> um, and if we click into this agenda tab, you can actually see all of the different events that are happening at this conference. So it looks like it's a two-day conference um, with a bunch of different workshops. Um, and you can actually see the, the schedule of those workshops. And if we sc scroll down a little bit, you can see all the different sessions in a list as well. Um, in addition to who's registered, who's checked in, um, really a lot of detail for all of these sections. Um, you can even see the session tracks as well. Uh, so you can see that uh, there's day one sessions, day two sessions. You can group those out separately and so you can track those uh, individually. Um, we can also see the speaker engagements here as well as the sponsors that are sponsoring this event. Um, th this, by the way, this error is just, uh, has to do with our environment. We use this environment for multiple things. So there's uh, some little script errors. Um, if we take a look at this website and form page, uh, you can see that there isn't currently a custom event URL set up, um, but Dynamics 365 Marketing allows you to very quickly spin up 
your own custom websites as essentially landing pages for users or for customers. Um, so customers can come to your landing page and uh, register for your event there. They can subscribe to your email mailing list, really anything like that. And then you can attach that to events and then track that through the events, just like we did with the marketing email. I'm um, again, that. Uh, so if we look at the registration and attendance, you can see here that we have the different passes that are available. So you can even determine the, the financial impact of this event. Um, so we can see all the different passes that are allocated. We can see how many are sold and how many are left as well. So we can know how many passes we have left to distribute. Um, there's a little bit of additional information here as well. So this is where the financial information would be. Um, and you can actually track these financials as well. Um, now this again is, is a little bit outside of the scope of this talk, but um, you can track the financials from the event uh, down to a pretty granular level um, and really get an idea of, of how profitable the event was or how much it cost you versus the, the value that you get out of that event. Um, so it's a very powerful tool overall. Um, we're gonna go back to the marketing page here now that we've kind of taken a look at events and uh, we're gonna move into lead scoring. Um, now, this, again, is another very powerful feature of Dynamics 365 Marketing. Uh, now, generally speaking, when you do lead scoring, uh, the goal is to figure out which leads are worth pursuing, which leads are most, most worth spending your time on. Um, and this tool allows you to do that in a pretty robust way. So let's go ahead and set up a new lead scoring model. And uh, what we can do with this is we can set up conditions and actions that uh, interact with our customers in some way. Uh, this is, again, very similar to the segments, the way that those are configured. So if we drag one of these conditions over, um, you can see that if we expand this condition, we can basically modify the condition that's attached to it. Um, so we can say, for example, that um, like if we click into this entities field, this gives us all the different options for behaviors uh, that we can modify as a condition. So um, you can, for example, say that uh, if an email is opened, um, for, for each email that's opened in the lifetime of the contact, um, then we can add an action to the end of that and basically say that uh, if that contact has opened an email, which is the condition here, um, increase their lead score by five. And what this allows us to do is, at a very granular level, determine which actions are most valuable to us and essentially assign a point value to that so that um, we can configure a, essentially a point threshold above which a lead is considered sales ready. Uh, and then that's all automated so that any actions the customer takes, uh, any uh, any fields that they modify, um, for example, if, uh, if living in a certain place increases their score, if they move and their contact updates and that will increase their score, um, all of this is automated. Um, this can also be done in a composite way as well. So if we back out of this lead scoring model, I can briefly show you an example of an existing lead score model. Um, and you can see here that we have multiple different conditions that are all contributing to this model. Um, so you can see here that we're evaluating email opens um, and that results in a five point increase. We're also looking at an event registration, which is a 10 point increase since it is a more, um, a more involved engagement. We can also look at website visits as well. And so those can be scored uh, depending on which website they're visiting and what they're doing. Um, which in this case is a five point increase. And then over here we have email bounces, which results in a five point decrease. Um, so if we're consistently bouncing emails off of a given customer, their lead score is going to drop uh, based on this scoring model. Um, so as you might imagine, this is a very, very flexible tool um, and very powerful, even just for power users, because there isn't really any code required uh, to make this work. Um, so you're able to very easily set up these uh, very complicated lead scoring models that allow you to, um, in an automated fashion, determine uh, which contacts are worth your time the most. And are there reports surrounding uh, the lead scoring? Um, there are. Uh, there are a lot of reports that are available in the system generally, and really everything in Dynamics 365 Marketing uh, has some sort of kind of entity base to it that's based in the database, and anything that's in there can be reported on. Um, so these lead scoring models have data that they generate from these insights. So you can see over here that we have uh, some basic insights, um, but there's also uh, the ability to integrate with Power BI and Microsoft Customer Insights. Um, we don't currently have that in place in this demo, 
Um, but this allows for just a massive increase in the amount of insights that you're able to generate in the reporting uh, from this information. Um, like those reports are, are really, really powerful, um, more so even than the insights that I showed on the marketing emails, uh, where you can see very, very clearly what's happening with the lead scoring model. Thank you. Of course. Um, yeah, I mean, that really does it for um, just the, the general overview. Let's go ahead and go back to our document here. Doing okay there? Okay. Um, so just to kind of summarize what we've been looking at here, uh, we created a marketing email that we then used as part of a customer journey um, by essentially assigning that customer journey to a segment. Um, that email then got sent to that segment and the, uh, the customer journey recorded all the information that came back from that email and presented that to us as insights that we can then use to action uh, the record in the future. Um, so as you can see, this is a very powerful tool with capabilities that covers really the entire spectrum of marketing, um, from lead generation and scoring at the very beginning, um, even to event management as we covered, uh, and post-purchase follow-up. Um, so this again integrates well with customer service as well, if there's any sort of issues that uh, have to be addressed. Um, the customer journey models empower marketing staff to build tailored journeys uh, very quickly and efficiently with that drag and drop interface that we took a look at. Um, and because there really is no integration, it just exists as a single unit, um, it gives marketing units a complete picture of customer behavior. Um, and as we showed that there's uh, also very rich insights about every aspect of the marketing initiatives that you're undertaking. Questions. So I do have a couple questions. Um, first one being, how does D365 marketing differ from something like Click Dimensions? So Click Dimensions, for anyone that isn't aware, is uh, a solution that you can add to Dynamics. Um, it's Click Dimensions is more kind of plug and play, um, but it's a lot less flexible and it's less of a complete solution than Dynamics 365 marketing. Um, especially when it comes to event planning. You generally need a third-party tool if you're going to do events with Click Dimensions, um, whereas as we showed with Dynamics 365 Marketing, that is just included as part of the package. Um, and uh, things like lead scoring, for example, are much better in Dynamics 365 Marketing. Um, and there's just more that you can do with how the system is configured when it comes to the customer journeys. Really just takes it to that next step, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, click Dimensions is just kind of, it's an easy solution to set up, but there's not a whole lot you can do with it past that. Um, whereas this one is maybe a little bit more effort to set up in the first place, but you can do so much more with it. Okay. Um, had a question come in. To, it's, does this integrate with HubSpot or is it expected to fully replace it? It's a good question. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it comes to HubSpot, but let me take a note of this. Okay. Then we can get back. Uh, would we be able to get the um, the name so we can respond in the future? Uh, yeah, it's Kelsey. We have the Correct. name on line here. So thank you for your question, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. um, another question came in. Uh, can you send documents and other resources through this tool? Is there yes. tracking for if it is opened? Uh, yes. Yeah, you can send documents through this resource. Awesome. And then can you track whether that document is opened? Mm, it depends on the document. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are certain types of documents that are going to be less conducive to that. Oops, I accidentally mm -hmm. clicked on, no worries. <laughs> on my presentation. Okay. Um, so we can uh, dive a little deeper into that just privately mm -hmm. and uh, yep. get some answers there. And then um, another question was, is there a free trial available for Dynamics? 365 marketing. There is. Yeah, so we can set you up with a free trial and uh, you're welcome to go through the solution at your own, uh, on your own and uh, at your own pace. Um, that's actually what we use as kind of the baseline for this. Um, this is built on that free trial. So really you have a ton of flexibility even with the free trial um, to look into this. Perfect. And um, I think that covers all the questions that came in, but if any others do pop up, please feel free to enter them in the chat or not the chat, but the questions box. Um, and then we can just move on to that next slide, Daniel. Sure thing. Great. And 
also thank you for the presentation and taking us through that demo. Um, I hope it was informative for everybody and everybody got to get a little bit more insights into what Dynamics 365 can um, do for you. Um, and as far as next steps are concerned, we would love to talk to you um, to explore whether 365 marketing is a fit for your company. Um, and we can even help set up a free trial for you guys if you did want to mess around with it yourself and get a little bit more comfortable to make sure it is that fit. And then um, outside that, if you want to just skip the free trial or when the free trial ends, you want to do a workshop with us, we can actually do a deeper dive into your actual processes and your marketing strategies and then kind of apply them to Dynamics 365 marketing. So that way you can really get that full sense of what it can do for you and maybe how it can improve some of your current processes. And then um, after that, if you really like it, like what you see, want to move forward, we can help you uh, get it all set up and develop a plan to get things rolling for you and get you started using probably one of the more powerful tools out there. So um, after this ends, we'll be sending out the webinar recording. Um, I think on the next slide, Daniel, is our contact information. Yep, there it is. It's if you nice. have questions or anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, um, you can expect an email from probably myself or um, my colleague Judd, and we'll have a bit more information for you, and we'll try to get any unanswered questions answered. And otherwise, um, we'll give everybody back about 15 minutes of their day. So again, thank you everybody for stopping by. We really do appreciate your time. And have a great rest of your day.